Okay, y'all, I'm coming in strong and hot to start this podcast because we actually just recorded this podcast and it went for an hour long, which is longer than our typical podcast. And we were like, should we break it up? Should we do part one and part two? But it's so good. Honestly, I feel like it's truly going to help y'all so much. Um, This is the message that changed my life personally, just walking through fear and anxiety and uh, walking through that with the truth of God's word. And there's just a lot to say on that. You can't condense that to 45 minutes. Like it's an hour long conversation. And I just wanted to go ahead and say that to y'all up front. Don't miss the end. Don't tap out. Like I know it's long. If you have to pause it, go to work, come back, finish it on your car ride home, do that. Pause it, go to class, do whatever you need to do, but hear the whole thing. Um, Towards the end, we're going to talk about practical things when it comes to fear and anxiety. Uh, We're also going to talk about moments of discernment that I've had in my life. How to identify if it's God telling me that I should be afraid of something or if it's actual discernment and wisdom and some of those confusing things. And there's just a lot of good content towards the very end I don't want you guys to miss. So we're about to start this podcast now, but I don't want you to miss a single second of it because I believe it can truly change your life. What's up, Well That's Good fam? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all might not be used to seeing my mom and I on this side of the room. We're normally doing the Sisters and Friends podcast together, but today we wanted to do Well That's Good podcast together because we have a giant topic that we're talking about and it just fit right into podcast scheduling that we wanted to talk about fear and anxiety, which, hello, that's a big one. I know many of you are probably clicking on this video, even if you don't even know who who we are because you struggle with fear and anxiety and you want a way out. And so we hope and pray that this can lead you to um, a life of more peace and um, a lot less anxiety. And coming from someone who used to really struggle and live in that fear and anxiety place to someone now who lives really with a peaceful mind and a confidence, not to say that things aren't scary, but just to say that it's not what I'm defined by anymore. Um, I'm excited for this podcast because I think it's really going to be beneficial for you. So also we are pre-recording this podcast. We are recording it a couple months in advance because I still have not had my baby yet at this point. Um, But I hope you guys at this point of life have been loving mom hosting the podcast, which is so fun. And you are an excellent host. I know you're going to do a great job. Thank you. Uh, have heard one of your interviews thus far that you've already pre-recorded and so I know this summer is going to be awesome and uh, we're pre-recording this because like I said we felt like it was important to talk about this topic and actually it kind of got brought up because last time when I had honey I went through like postpartum anxiety which didn't really see that coming because I had been living free of anxiety for maybe like two years at that point. And then it just slapped me in the face. And so I wanted to do this again, even before I had the baby to remind me of just the truth that I found and um, the, you know, ways out of fear that I found. That's good, Sadie. I love that we're talking about this. We It is something that we've talked about a lot in your life because you have dealt with it. But I yes. love that um, exactly what you just said. It's like you're reminding yourself. And that is what's so important to like say like, hey, like this, I'm, I'm going to enter something that might make me fearful, that could bring mm-hmm. about fear, could bring about anxiety, but I'm going to prepare. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to ground myself in God's word and yeah. the truth of what he says about it so that when that time comes, I can be prepared for that. Yeah. And I think that's really important. So right off the bat, like you just sharing that and the reason for doing this, I think is going to help people. Yes. I do think that like, I'm a big prepper like I like to be prepared Uh for things and I do think that in some sense like you have to prepare your mind for things and I don't think that we think about that sometimes like we get prepared in the sense that like oh we pack for a trip you know Mm -hmm. or we get things ready to go out the door but like you have to mentally prepare for a day sometimes like you have to mentally prepare for a season and I think that you know especially during pregnancy you prepare for all these other things but you forget to prepare yourself Mm -hmm. and you know I had everything I needed for postpartum uh, mm-hmm. that the, they recommended. I had the Frida kit, you she know. She had everything. I had me. everything you need. But I didn't this have, girl was like, prepared. the mm-hmm. mental, like, preparation that I think I needed. And it, it surprised me. And um, just to the extent of my anxiety at the time, I remember um, everyone was, like, watching a movie. And I just, like, went to my closet. And I was literally in the fetal position, like, shaking. And Christian walked in. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, 
And I just, all I could say was, I'm so scared. And it was so weird because I was like, well, I don't know why I'm so scared. I just am. And so I want to read actually the definition of fear because I think sometimes it's just helpful to know why you're afraid, you know? And so fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Um, that's the noun and the verb is to be afraid of something or someone as likely to be dangerous, painful, or threatening. So it's basically like, I'm scared that something might hurt me is Mm -hmm. essentially what fear is. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time, what I didn't think about, um, and now I can see so clearly, it's hard to see at the time, but with postpartum especially, is I had had this loop going on in my brain all day is my baby okay? Like, Mm -hmm. is she okay? Am I okay? Is like, this feels weird. That feels weird. Is she breathing? I checked on her. Like I literally, if she was asleep, I'd be like, is she breathing? Is she this? Is she fine? She coughed. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Are you, what's going on? Like everything was like this state of like, is something going to hurt her? And if it hurt her, it would destroy me. And Mm -hmm. so it was this, so, you know, all those fearful thoughts that might've seemed small at the time led into this massive anxiety attack. Well, that was just postpartum. I had fear before postpartum, like I said years ago, mom really walked through this season out with me. So just from your perspective, uh, when I lived in the state of anxiety in high school that I was in, Versus now, Mm -hmm. how different am I as a person? Do you notice it? Oh, so different. Yes. I mean, so different. But I want to go back to a few things you said. I feel like there's so many things that um, how we can, ways that we can have this conversation. But one, that is a normal fear. Like even having grandbabies, it brought back those, that remembering those fears Mm -hmm. of like a new mom and like making sure your baby's breathing and all that because that's your like life outside of you. So yeah. those are normal fears and it's 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 not wrong to to have those fears. Mm-hmm. The thing that um will hurt you is like you said that loop. Is whenever you allow that loop to come in your brain and also you you try to take it all on yourself. Like mm-hmm. then it's all on me. Okay? Because I'm worried about my child. I have to do it all. Yeah. I have to, I can't sleep. I can't sleep because I, if I'm not, if I'm sleeping then I'm not watching my baby. I can't, yeah. you know, am I doing everything right? And those are the things that um can really take over and leave you in the fetal position in your closet. Yeah. <laughs> it starts it small. Yeah. And then that's the loop right. gets bigger. Mm-hmm. And that's so true. Mm-hmm. Like fear, and this is like an important thing to note, yeah. is that fear is a normal human reaction. Yeah. Like you're going to be afraid of things that are scary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got a tattoo when I was 18 or 19 that says fearless. And I wrote a book called Live Fearless. And I don't really think that you should even live fearless because I think if you don't have any fear, um, you probably don't have much wisdom in a sense of like, okay, you know what? If I'm like not scared at all and there's like a pool of great white sharks, I'm just like, to heck with it. Let's do it. Let's just see what happens. Like that's just actually really dumb. Like you should maybe have a little bit of healthy fear to say, Mm -hmm. this is not only a potential threat and dangerous, this is dangerous and a threat. So like there's some- Well, maybe you could say Mm -hmm. like, Exchange the word fear for like respect, a respect for like, okay, yeah. this is an animal this that could hurt not me, a good idea. or this is a situation that could be harmful to me. Yes, yes. So there is like fear with wisdom that's like a, right. a really yeah. good thing. So fear is normal. So I'm not saying like, oh, you should live completely fearless. You should never feel the emotion of mm-hmm. fear because you're going to feel the emotion of fear. That's a normal thing. But there's a difference in um, feeling it and almost like bowing to it yeah. and living in it. Yeah. And I think, you know, for a time of my life, I was bowing to it. Like yeah. fear was driving the ship of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, if I felt afraid, I wasn't doing it. If I felt afraid, I was getting out of the room. I mean, yeah. to the point that well, I was on a plane one time and I felt afraid and thought this plane's going to crash. And um, before we took off, we were almost, I think we were about to start taxiing. And I told the flight attendant I had to get off this plane. She was like, why? I'm like, I, I'm so afraid. Like, I, had this, I, I didn't tell her this plane's going to crash. But I was like, I got to get me off this plane. They already shut the door and everything. They're like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. And I was by myself. And I got off the plane. And I, so what I'm saying is, like, I was living in fear. Mm-hmm. Fear was driving the ship of my life. And that is not healthy at all. Yeah. And so it's not that fear all the time is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. But when you are bowing to it and yeah. it is driving the ship of your life and it is um, almost the 
in some case scenarios, um, your identity in your life, mm-hmm. that is definitely an unhealthy yeah. place to be. And I've been and there before. And I think that's kind of where I saw you get in high school that made me kind of like stand up and be like, okay, we're, we're not going to do this, you know, because you were, I do remember, even as a child, I remember like you had a hard time going to school, but when, you know, your kindergarten year, it was rough, you know, because you just did not want to leave me. I remember there was, there were things that you loved, you know, you were like, have to have three kisses, you know, specific things that you wanted to do and you had fears about weather. There were some things that you, I saw that in you as a child, but that you were overcoming and, you know, Mm -hmm. you were, but then there's a point where in high school, it honestly, it kind of became, it wasn't just you, it became this thing like, oh, everyone has anxiety disorder. Everyone has this and this like acceptance of, okay, this is just who I am and how I'm going to be. And this is normal. Y'all, there have certainly been times in my health journey that have been uh, better than others. I've walked through some hard seasons with it where you just face challenges and it just gets discouraging. But there are easy ways to help encourage you in your health journey, no matter what your health journey looks like. And AG1 is a great place to start. A health fan or big fans of AG1 by Athletic Greens because it is a small thing that takes you a long way in getting healthy. AG1 is great for establishing and sticking to healthy habits. Christian just puts one scoop of AG1 in his water in the morning, and it's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals our bodies need. AG1 also gives him a boost of focus, energy, and stamina, plus it supports his gut health, which is great for your mental health and his immune system. And who likes being sick? Nobody. So supporting your immune system is so important. And Christian is all about not getting sick. And so this is a great thing for him to use to prevent getting sick. It also makes traveling uh, so easy of being healthy because traveling and being healthy sometimes don't go hand in hand. But AG1 has travel packs. You can throw in your backpack super easy and you can take it daily and it'll just meet all your health goals. I mean, it's literally 75 vitamins and minerals in this one scoop that you're taking with you or your one little travel pack. Um, it can be really hard. Also, I know to swallow a handful of pills every day. So they have other things that are great too that I love, like the vitamin D3 plus K2 drops by Athletic Greens. There are no pills required or complicated prep. It's just a few drops in your food or water every day. And it supports your immune system, your heart, your teeth, your bones, even your skin. With 600 servings in every bottle, you're also not going to be running out anytime soon. So this is going to take you a long way. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe to check it out today. It became an identity. It became an identity. Mm -hmm. And as I was thinking about this conversation today and looking back through scripture, I mean, I pulled up, like, you know, scriptures about fear or worry or anxiety. And, I mean, there are so many. It's all the way through the Bible. So, like, this is not something new that people are anxious or people worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus addressed it. It was It's over and over again. Old Testament, New Testament. So, it's not something new. But I think there may be something that I saw happen when you were in high school. It become a... It's like acceptable, acceptable thing. identity or thing. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that's what God has for us. God yeah. has an abundant life for us. He has a life and he and He tells us, do not fear for I am with you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we are, we are followers of Jesus, mm-hmm. we, he tells us, he's like, I'm going and I'm leaving the spirit with you. We have the spirit of God mm-hmm. in us. So we have, we, we should be walking differently. Yeah. We have the spirit of God in us. Yeah. We should be walking differently. We should not be conform to the standards of the world, yeah. but we need to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that comes with yeah. a, um, with a peace. Yes. A peace. Because of who God is mm-hmm. in your situation. I love, there's a verse that talks about how like you haven't been given the spirit of uh, a slave or a spirit of fear, but you've been given a spirit to cry out, Abba, Father. And when you understand like what that means, it's like, you know, if I get to cry out, Abba, Father, to the God of the universe, then I don't have to have a spirit of fear over my life because 
I have a God in heaven who's sovereign over all things. Now, that doesn't mean that things aren't going to get scary. I love uh, Psalms 46. It's basically like when everything goes wrong, be still and know that he is yeah. God. And it's like, that's not saying that things aren't scary or not going on. It literally talks about mountains falling into the heart of the sea and kingdoms and uproar and nations going against each other. These are like legitimate scary things. Mm-hmm. But it says to be still. Well, how are you going to be still when that's going on? Because he is God, because yeah. he's got it. And it's that surrender of like, you have my life, God. Yeah. Um, I love though, this is such a good point um, when we're talking about fear, because God does say to so many people, do not be afraid, that it was, I think this is cool. It wasn't that God was like shocked by their fear. God was actually very empathetic with their fear, that that would be one of the first things that he would say to them. Because he knows as a human, you're going to be afraid of what I'm about mm-hmm. to say. Like, yeah. I'm calling you to something that's really scary. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and say off the bat, like, you don't have to be afraid. And it's not this like harsh command of like, don't be afraid, even though I'm asking you to do something scary. It was actually this promise that he was giving them. Don't be afraid for I am with you. I got you. Like, I will be your strength. Mm-hmm. I will be your shield. I'm going to lead the way. And so fear does not disqualify you for God using you. Mm-hmm. But when you bow to fear, when you surrender to fear over God, then it does. And yeah. uh, Gideon's story is a really good example of this because Gideon uh, was called by God. And Gideon was like, I am the weakest of my tribe. I am <laughs> not the guy for the job. Like he's afraid, right? And um, yet God still uses him. Well, then in the next chapter, God literally says like to all the people who are shaking and trembling, basically for all the anxious people in the army, like get rid of them. And God, Gideon has to get rid of all the people that are afraid. Yeah. And I used to read that and I'd be like, that's so weird that he got rid of all these people who were afraid, but yet Gideon was afraid. And I realized that there's a difference in like being afraid, but still saying yes, even though you're afraid and being afraid to the point that it makes you say no. And I love what you've always said to me when I was growing up. You you can have a lot of excuses to not do something, but fear cannot be one of them. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I think that that's so true because we see we see evidence of that over and over again in the Bible. And as you were talking, I was thinking about like God is our good Father, and He does prepare us with His Word. And I was thinking about when Jesus is about to leave the disciples, and He talks about He's like, "I'm not telling you this so you'll be afraid. I'm telling you this so you'll know and you'll be prepared good. that I'm going to send someone to." to help you and to cover you. And as a parent, I was thinking about that, like for you, and and this is good, this is just parenting advice. If you have little kids that are are scared and are fearful, that you do have those conversations. Like whenever you take, we take their grandkids to the doctor now, it's like, okay, we're going to go to the doctor. And like, the doctor's going to look in your throat. And that preparation is helpful. It's really helpful for kids that are fearful and for adults that are fearful. So like, There are things that you can do, and I think that God does this in Scripture over and over again. He's like, I'm telling you, like, you're about to face some trials. It's going to be hard. It's going to be rough. You're going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but fear no evil because He has conquered that. And so Mm -hmm. I do think as a good father, God does prepare us, but there are ways that we have to partner with God in that preparation. We have to read the Scripture. We have to soak on that Scripture. We have to... We have to um, be mindful whenever fear, that loop starts coming up in our brain. So I think preparation yeah. is an important it's piece. It's like honey. Honey is mm-hmm. legitimately so scared of the doctor. And she has reason to be because yeah. she's had to be in the hospital mm-hmm. twice. And it was scary and it was hard mm-hmm. and poking and all the things mm-hmm. and looking. And that's really annoying to a two-year-old. <laughs> I mean, it's really annoying for anyone, but it's really scary for a two-year-old. And so now she gets so much anxiety when we go to like, you know, just her pediatrician. And so I bought her like all these doctor things, like tools for kids. And uh, she has her own little uh, stethoscope. She has her uh-huh. little badge. She mm-hmm. has her things. And um, we wear it, you know, before we go to the doctor. And then I look in her ears and I'm like, okay, hey, the doctor's going to do this too. And um, and then at the end, you're going to get a sucker. And so yeah. it's just kind of like, but God kind of does that to us. He's yeah. like, hey, it's going to be hard. You're going to face trials, but take our, I've overcome the world. Like there mm-hmm. is the end of the story. You're going to get a sucker. Like there is an eternal life it's so good. it's just this preparation but also like but holding fast to those things you mm-hmm. know um like claim those scriptures yeah. know those scriptures quote those scriptures over your life and mm-hmm. um mom was such a good 
Yeah. I was going to say friend of fear to me at the time because before I knew the scriptures, you would read them over me. Mm -hmm. And I actually remember the day that I ran off the plane, (laughs) terrified. (laughs) I called mom in the bathroom. I was shaking and um, just had so much anxiety. And you started reading or quoting uh, Isaiah with yeah. Memo Howard kind of spoke over your life. So tell yeah. that because I think that's really Well, cool. I think we've talked about this before on here, but I think it it's worth repeating. So my grandmother um, did have mental illness. She was bipolar, diagnosed bipolar and diagnosed with schizophrenia. So she had a lot of things to be scared of in her lifetime. She had had a difficult life. Um, but every single night she quoted Isaiah 41 10. She quoted over herself. I, I know she did it whether we were there or not, but when I was there as a as a grandchild and spent the night at her house, every night before you went to bed, she said, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord. And I can just remember her voice um quoting that scripture because she knew she needed she needed that mm-hmm. before she went to bed at night. And as children, we needed that to know that like fear not, for God is God is mm-hmm. with us. Um he, he is our Lord, so there's nothing that we mm-hmm. we need to fear. And I think, like, one thing that's important is if you're going to be confident um, that God being with you is mm-hmm. going to be the thing that's going to make you not afraid, you really got to get to know who God is. Yeah. Because if you don't know who God is, then mm-hmm. that doesn't really mean anything to you. Yeah. If, if you don't know who God is, and I say— Oh my gosh, listen to this. You might walk through the valley of shadow of death, but the word says, do not fear for I am with you. For my rod and my staff, they will comfort you. I'm the good shepherd of life. If you don't know the good shepherd, if you don't know God, then then you might say, well, what does this mean to me? You yeah. know. And so my encouragement to you is yeah. get to know God. If you get to know who God is, if you read these scriptures, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, like that's who's on my side. That's the spirit that's within me. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and living inside of me. What in the world? Even the fear of death, the sting of death has been taken. Well, if the sting of death has been taken, if the fear of death has been taken, then what is there to be afraid of? Yeah. Like, I mean, that makes all me of a sudden, about, well, you saying sense. that makes me think about um, the disciples in the boat when the storm mm-hmm. comes. Yeah. And they're they're so scared. Jesus is over there sleeping and they're so scared. And he and they wake him up and they're like, do you even care that we're going to die here? And then Jesus is like, what are you afraid of? And he says, he, he's like, you, where, where is your faith? Mm-hmm. And it's because they don't yet know Jesus. They yeah. don't quite understand who he is. They don't understand yet who they have in the yeah. boat with him with them. If they understood who was in the boat with them, then they wouldn't be afraid. Yes, I love, and Ben Stewart said at Passion, they're more certain of the power of the storm than they were certain of the power of God in the mm. boat because they knew more about the storm, you know? And I think sometimes that's how it is in our life. Like, we know so much about the scary things going on in the world, and we haven't taken the time to get to know God. Therefore, the scary things going on in the world seem more powerful. They seem more uh, present. And yet God is over here in yeah. all authority of heaven, and um, on your side, ready for you to cry out, Father, to Him to come, mm-hmm. like, be with you as a child. And yet you just don't realize the power that you have yeah. in calling out His name. And so that's so important. Our life is a little crazy right now. Everything's changing. And with all of this going on in our lives, I'm so thankful for Helix Sleep Mattresses. It's perfectly designed to balance the different sleep habits that Christian and I have. We just took a two-minute Helix Sleep Quiz and found a mattress that was perfect for both of our needs. And you gotta love a company that's making marriage easier for everyone. I mean, that's just awesome. Helix has 14 unique models, even options for big and tall and kids too, which I'm definitely gonna have to take a look at whenever my girls are big enough to have their own beds. Uh, Some models have extra responsive foam to cradle your body at night. Some models have advanced cooling features for sweaty sleepers out there. Some of you might be side sleepers, some of you might be stomach sleepers, but whatever it's type of sleeper you are, Helix has got you covered with a mattress that will give you the perfect combo of support and comfort. I'm a side sleeper and Helix matched Christian and me with the Helix Midnight. It's not too soft and not too firm and it's honestly just what we need to get a good night's sleep. Uh, We love our Helix mattress. We've also gifted Helix mattresses to friends who've gotten married and everyone has said this is the best mattress they've ever had. Um, Whenever you get in the bed, it literally feels like it just hugs you because it's made for you. And with all the kids running around at our house, Christian and I, 
are all about ease and convenience and making sleep easy. So set up for a Helix Sleep mattress is as easy as it can be, especially when it comes to mattress shopping. Our personalized mattress was just shipped straight to the door for free. And you even get a hundred nights to try it out at your home, but I know you're gonna love it. It's also awesome that every Helix mattress is American made and comes with a 10 to 15 year warranty, depending on which model you get. The Huffs aren't the only people who love Helix mattress. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress by Wire Magazine and many others and is recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine. Plus, Helix supports our students, teachers, military, and first responders by offering them special discounts on the site. So Helix is spreading love for everyone. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. This is their best offer yet, and it will not last long. With Helix, better sleep can start now. Go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. I love with the parenting 101 that you talked about kind of... um, like pushing me in Mm -hmm. a sense to do the things I was afraid of. I think that's really important because I almost think that something going on in our generation that's tough is like, we've talked about this before. I did a message called My Truth Versus The Truth. And there's a different varieties of what we named it on YouTube, a couple of different messages, but all in all, the conversation of the My Truth thing. And it's very difficult when someone says something like, well, this is my truth, because um, I love how Urban Dictionary uh, defined it, my truth. They were like, it's basically a personal opinion that you've said is now truth, which means no one can now argue it because it's true, which that's Mm -hmm. such a hard thing to do, because if you say something is a truth, then no one can argue it. And so it's such a scary place to be. And I think in the same sense, when we say like, anxiety is our identity Mm -hmm. then it's hard for people to encourage you out of it because it seems like no this is just who I am this is how I'm gonna be this is Mm -hmm. how it's gonna be and there's no wiggle room here like I'm Mm -hmm. unwilling to hear what you're gonna say because at the end of the day even if you give me advice this is who I'm gonna be yeah and so I do just want to go ahead and address like if you have been identifying with anxiety like this is who I am it goes beyond um, a feeling of fear it's become my personality it's become my identity it's become my truth. I just want to encourage you right now to drop that as an identity because that's not who you are. It's not who you were created to be. That is definitely not your identity as a child of God. And um, I just want you to have the ears to hear that so that you don't stay stuck in it. Because I could have very easily said that in high school because of the way my life looked, but that is not who I am. And I'm proud at 25 years old, married with a baby and one on the way to say, I'm not defined by my fear and anxiety. And so I just want to say that, and I think you helped me with that because you didn't let me surrender to that anxiety and you pushed me. So tell the camp story. Yeah, I was thinking about, as you were talking about that too, I love whenever um, scripture, well, I guess I should say, science and scripture match yes. like they always do it always do there's just like everything that you can find here there's all these i love to read these books about like sociological studies or whatever and i'm like oh yeah that's in the bible that's yeah. in god's word you know and just idea that like you've never no one overcomes fear by shrinking back and not doing it mm-hmm. you overcome fear by facing it and so like that is just over and over again you see in the scripture these people were scared. They were they were going into tough situations, but they faced their fear yep. and they overcame fear. And so, I was thinking about um, that and how, as a parent, we know that for our children. And so, and th- there are parents I think that allow children's fears to 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 control them. You know, mm-hmm. if you have a fear of doing like walking through that door okay well we won't have to walk through the door we'll figure out a way to climb over and around Mm -hmm. you know but that's actually not helpful that's really not helpful you're not going to overcome a fear by going around that fear you're really going to overcome a fear by facing it and so I was telling Sadie um this morning that I remembered one of the very first times that she's she um we went to a summer camp 
Camp Chioka that our family has been a part of since day one. My parents met there. We met there. And the first year Sadie was a camp. She had like lived out there, like grown Literally, up Literally, like our camp. house was on the property. On the property, <laughs> yes, exactly. But the first year she was actually in a camper, we get to the closing program and they have to go up to the front and sing a song, you know, sing in front of us, do the little closing With program. With like a hundred people. It wasn't a solo. No. Just to it's, paint this picture. It's the whole camp <laughs> is standing on risers. The parents are sitting there like, Willie and I are there. Her grandparents are there. It's just like, <laughs> it's family, you know? And um, she gets scared. She does not want to go up there and sing her song at the end. And I, as a mom, like, no, okay, she is in a safe place. She is fine. Like, she's going to overcome this. Now, I could have just said, okay, well, baby, you don't have to, you don't have to do it. You're scared. I know you're scared. And now I had sympathy for her. I felt for her. Like, I hated that she felt that fear. But also, I knew that she needed to face that fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Do it afraid. You know, that saying, like, do it afraid. I knew that she needed to face it and do it afraid. And so I just said, Maybe you're gonna be okay. You're gonna do. You're going to do this, and then afterwards, you know, I'll be here, and I'm gonna see you, and we're gonna we'll go get a prize or whatever. And so, um, I walked watching her walk in, like along with all the campers and her little face. She's like just pitiful. She stands on the front row and she cries the whole way through, like the whole way through on the very front row. And we're all sitting there, like you're okay, you got this, you know. But um. But it was a moment that I just felt like as a mom, I was like, I know she's okay. Mm-hmm. And I know that if I allow her to give into this and think, looking at what you do now, to speak thing. on stage and do all the things that you do, you know, if I had allowed her any of those moments yeah. to say like, okay, you're scared of this, mm-hmm. then you don't have to do it, baby. Yeah. Then, you know, she might not be doing what she's doing right yeah. now. It's so true. I mean, li- identifying with fear is actually um, keeping you from your true identity. Yeah, you know, yeah. because uh-huh. if I would have, if that would have started the pattern in my life of saying, "Mom, saying, okay, well, if you're afraid and that's part of your personality and that's who you are, mm-hmm. then you don't have to do it, and we'll just let John Luke do it and your other yeah. siblings do mm-hmm. it." Well, I would never be doing what I'm doing Mm -hmm. now because now Mm -hmm. my life is on a stage. It's in front of a camera in so many scenarios. And had I always just been like, well, it's scary, it's scary, it's scary, so I'm not going to do it, then I wouldn't have ever done it. And the cool thing is, like, confidence really is – almost like waiting to meet you at the place where you conquer your fear you know like I think that the more you do it the more you do it afraid the more confident that you get and I mean even honey the other day uh she heard these we were in Destin Florida there's a lot of those you know jets that fly by and they're loud and the first time she heard it she's like (gasps) and she just like ran and she grabbed onto her grandma's leg and she was like terrified (laughs) and uh you know it kept happening we said oh it's okay it's an airplane it's an airplane look honey I am not kidding you. That little girl, like two days later, was so obsessed with airplanes. I about lost my mind because I heard the words airplane probably <laughs> 350 times in a day. Because she would go, airplane, 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 more airplane, more airplane, mama, more airplane, mommy, airplane, airplane. Like she loved the airplane. And it was just so crazy that two days before she was afraid of the airplane. Yeah. But and how you, had you allowed her to give into like, oh, no, oh, she's scared yeah, and like run scared. away from it. She wouldn't face yes. that and have that joy that she finds in planes now yes but as a mom like I didn't affirm her fear Mm -hmm. I actually um you know shared with her the truth about what this is this is a this is an airplane and they fly in the sky and uh, and she now she goes up down Mm because she knows they go up and they go down and um you know it's just so cool as she communicated with her mom about this she became confident in the thing that she was once afraid of and that's the same way with god yeah i was thinking about also who you surround yourself with Mm -hmm. has a huge impact on if you have fear or anxiety and are allowed to sit in that or you're going to step out of that i was thinking about um we were just on vacation with the family and um Honey and um, Ella are on the step. And so Honey's standing on that step, and you could tell she's, like, weighing, like, can I step off of it? Is it okay? Can I can I make this leap? Can I jump? And Honey's looking and thinking about it, and she's kind of, like, swaying and <laughs> trying to decide. And then Ella, who is more fearless and things like that, and Ella has different – it's like each of your kids have different things that they're afraid yeah. of. But in that kind of thing, she's more fearless. So Ella just comes down and just, like, barrels off of it, you know. <laughs> and then Honey looks at her, and you could tell she's like, oh – 
She just did she it. She just did that. I could do this too. And then she did it. So true. And so the people that you surround yourself yes. with really matter. It does. And even just being the person to your friend that helps mm-hmm. them through fear. I remember yeah. uh, mom and I went to Mogadishu, Somalia, which was mm-hmm. a really scary trip because um, – Hello, it's a really yeah. scary part of the world. <laughs> I think there's a book that says it's the like world's most dangerous place. Yes, yeah. it, it mm-hmm. is. There's a couple movies. Black Hawk mm-hmm. Down was in Mogadishu's, mm-hmm. uh, Captain Phillips, Mogadishu. So yeah. a, a lot of scary things um, have happened there and continue to happen there. And we went there. Well, we had just gotten back and I had two days before tour. Do you remember this? Uh, we were about to go on tour. And you would think, like, my meltdown anxiety would be in Mogadishu Somalia. Nope. It happens because I'm so scared to go on tour because I don't feel prepared <laughs> for tour. So I get back, and um, I, I go to do, like, a little practice run. Uh, and I hate those kind of things. Like, I don't mm-hmm. like to, like, mic test or check, like, because I feel like I can't preach to, like, an empty room. Like, yeah. I'm preaching because people are there. Yeah. And so I just panic because the message did not go well. Mm-hmm. And I start crying. I'm like, I can't do this. I shouldn't have gone out of the country right before a tour. I'm having a meltdown. I go out, sit in the hallway. Um, once again, close to fetal position. And uh, I guess that's just my thing. And I'm so scared. And Lainey comes around the corner, one of my best friends, and she goes, uh, no, 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 no. And she starts saying no. And it caught me so <laughs> off guard because I'm thinking my friend is going to come and be like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I know the stress is probably so much. You just yeah. got back from this trip and you're about to go on this. Take a minute. No. She was like, no. Mm-hmm. She said, you don't get to do this. And I was like, excuse me, you don't get to do this because God has called you for this. He's anointed you for this. There's no reason you should be afraid. Um, And she just started preaching to me. And I'm sitting there like, dang, like you're right. So I got my butt up and I went back in there. And guess what? Tour started in two days. And lives were changing. It was so powerful. Yeah. And I, and she was basically like, get over yourself. Like, this is not mm-hmm. about you. Like, do you not see that God's so much bigger than this? And uh, man, I'm so grateful for that moment. And I'll never forget it. And it was like the best thing so a good. friend could have done for me. So good. And so, you know, I think sometimes as friends, we think we want to just comfort. But sometimes as a friend, yeah. you got to call out. You know, yeah. you got to say, no, we're not doing this. That's not That's who good. you are. You're not going to uh, not do the thing God's calling you to do That's because right. you're afraid. And mom did that for me all my life. My best friend did that for me. I'm grateful to have That's people good. who do that. I mean, even the other night, um, I said, uh, oh, we were in, uh, we were saying somewhere else because we were out of town and uh, we had honey in the closet, like sleeping in the closet because mm-hmm. it was darker in there. Well, Christian went to put like a fan in the closet. But the way that it had to be plugged in made it like had the the thing had to go through the door. And I was just so worried about that going through the door. I was like, what if it like, what if, I don't know what would have happened, but it just like, <laughs> like I couldn't what, stop thinking about it. Yeah. I was thinking like, what if it like breaks the thing and it catches on fire? Like, I don't even know. Anyway, so I was like, babe, I think I'm going to turn that fan off. I think I'm going to go unplug the fan. I like, mm-hmm. kept saying it. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go do it. And then he was like ignoring me the whole time. And finally he goes, are you okay? (laughs) And I was like, yes, why? He's like, you're so worried about this plug in the fan. Like, why are you worried about that? And then I had said something earlier that I guess sounded kind of fearful. And it was just good because he was just like, hey, check in. Are you good? Because, yeah. like, that's not normal. Like, yeah. that's actually not scary and you're thinking about it way too much. Yeah. And, you know, it's just good to have those people in your life that call mm-hmm. you out for the loops that you're on who say, hey, no, you're not going to do this. Hey, get off that train. Right. I love how Two Mama says, stop camping out in your brain. Yeah. Like, stop setting up tent there. That's not a good place to set up tent. We used to call it the crazy train like get off the crazy crazy train train. that's basically christian going you're on some kind of crazy train you need to get off of it yeah and it was a crazy train i mean what really could have happened i really don't know (laughs) i I can't even explain it to (laughs) y'all i can't even explain it to y'all i was just like that's gonna catch on fire i don't even know but anyways i just say to say to be a good friend is not just to um i love mm -hmm. i used to always say this to you you never made me feel crazy for my fear which i appreciated yeah but you also never allow me to sit in it. And I think that so many people um, kind of can go one way where they they make people feel crazy. Like, what? why are you afraid? Mm-hmm. Like, are you crazy? And that's not helpful. Yeah. Um, but then there's another way of they're like, they just kind of accept it and allow it, mm-hmm. but then go beyond all those things and actually yeah. just um, help speak truth yeah. over people's that's lives. Good.
Y'all, my family is a family that loves to learn. I love learning new things every day, whether that's listening to podcasts, reading books. Um, But Liberty University has been a place that we've all loved to learn. A lot of my family members have gone there. My sister Bella is currently still at Liberty Online, and we just love what it has to offer. With over 700 residential and online degrees, Liberty University has really got you covered. Uh, Wherever you're wanting to go for your future, they can help you get there. Liberty's mission is training champions for Christ. The academic programs are awesome, and they um, and the whole education is actually Bible based, which is super special and one of the reasons we love it so much. They also offer um, all kinds of scholarships and discounts to help you achieve your dreams at a price that you can afford. So sounds pretty great, right? Uh, Liberty has several options for visiting their campus, so you can see for yourself what it's all about. They offer one day visits and college for a weekend, where you can actually take three days to test drive as a Liberty student with a huge campus, tons of sports teams, clubs, and students and organizations. There's really uh, not a whole lot not to love. You're, you're definitely going to love it. Um, like I said, a lot of my family members have attended Liberty University, so we've gotten to go several times and just love the campus. It's absolutely beautiful. My sister Bella was in an amazing program called Liberty University Online Academy. It's an accredited all-online Christian private school education for K through 12th grade students. Um, they have 24-7 access to a self-paced uh, curriculum that's taught by certified teachers. And it's not just all about the classes. Students also have access to extracurricular activities like clubs, field trips, and senior activities. With a community like that, Liberty University Online Academy can make the transition to homeschooling so seamless and simple for your family. It's also affordable and you can start anytime, so very doable for whatever season of life you're in. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie to plan your trip to Liberty today or to learn more about Liberty University Online Academy. And because you're a Well That's Good podcast listener, if you decide to apply to Liberty, you're also going to get your application fee waived. So friends, don't wait. Now's the time. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future today. I was thinking as you were talking about, I'd love to shift a little bit from fear to like worry. Yeah. Because I think that um, like for me, I have been a more, I'm, I'm not super feel, fearful person, but now worry, on the other hand, that's another thing. Like I can, I can worry, and sometimes I'll, I'll not even realize I'm worrying because I've kind of just, it's like inner, and then all of a sudden I get, I start having reflux, and I'm like, oh no, or I'm being like <laughs> really tired, reflux. you know, and I'm like, hey, that's what's going so on real. inside my body, you know? Because worry is something. It's there's fear and there's worry, and they they go hand in hand, but also we can get in these loops of worry of just like it's okay. True. Like, am I doing this right? Am I the, have, have I have I done? Have I checked all the boxes? Have mm-hmm. I done all that? And I was thinking about a time when someone called me out that um, was so good, and it was my a counselor, a therapist. I went into her her office, and thankfully, she's a incredible woman of God who um, will call you out. And and so I was sitting there, and it was a time when I was worrying. I was like, "There's a situation I've been praying for for a very long time." that nothing has changed. And I was feeling like, how, what else can I do? Have I done it all? Is there something else that I can do to make this situation better? And I remember saying like, this, it just feels hopeless. And mm-hmm. I said that word, it just feels hopeless because I had been worrying about this for, mm-hmm. for a long time. And she just stopped me right then. She was like, whoa. It's like, when you say something is hopeless, you are denying the power of God in your life. Mm. And she's like, because you do not serve a God that is without hope. Wow. Your God is a God of hope. He makes all things new. And she just like rebuked me right then. and wow. was just like, I'm not even going to allow you to say that because with God, nothing is impossible. And she just stopped me right there. And she was like, let's pray about this. And so, yeah, surround yourself with people who will do that for you, who will not let you sit in your worry and your fear and anxiety and all this, but will say like, nope. We serve a God who is bigger than all of that. Yeah. And um, who has your tomorrow. Like, I love that. Yeah. Don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough words on its own. Yeah. You know, like Jesus mm-hmm. says that. And if you think about that, then you really never have a time to worry because tomorrow's going to come tomorrow. and you can't worry about your tomorrow <laughs> and you can't worry about your tomorrow. Yeah. You just have to yeah. face what's right in front of you with mm-hmm. the help of God. And yeah. um, I mean, it's easy to worry, you know, but at the same time, it's not beneficial, you mm-hmm. know, to worry. Right. And I was thinking about that. Practically, it's actually just not helpful. It's just not helpful. <laughs> in Matthew. 
you when Jesus yeah. talks about like who by he says literally who by worrying has had a single hour to his day like no. nobody nobody Take it away, worry brother. does not actually do anything positive for you no. and so that's just a practical and normally thing. the things you worry about I have come to find out typically don't actually happen. I mean, sometimes they do. Sometimes Uh they do. That's not to say that sometimes Uh there are not very real things that happen Mm -hmm. in our life and we worry Mm -hmm. about things and they do happen and it's horrible. But there are a lot of things that we worry about that just actually don't happen. I mean, I think about um, just so many things I've worried about that I'm like, what even was that about? You know, And stayed up all night thinking about, you know? And so, yes, it definitely doesn't add anything Mm -hmm. to your life. And uh, I love how you mentioned the reflex and the tiredness (laughs) Because there is actually something true to be said that when you are afraid and have extreme anxiety or um, anything like that, it will physically manifest itself in some Mm -hmm. really harmful ways. I mean, I think about now my body is so much stronger, like Mm -hmm. feels so much better. My skin is more clear, like your stomach, like my stomach. (laughs) No, literally, I used to have so many stomach issues. I was constantly at the doctor trying to figure out what I had. Um, Remember, what is it? What was it? IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Like I was like, that's what I have. Like I have all these things. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Magically, when I stopped having anxiety, I don't have stomach problems, yeah. you know? And so there is like a physical manifestation there that fear brings. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have a friend who's walking through something that was really hard. I mean, you talk about worrying about something and the worry did happen. Yeah. And her um, jaw has been killing her and mm-hmm. she didn't know why. And she's been trying to figure it out. And they said, it's just the season you're in. Your fear yeah. has caused you to clench your jaw. And I used to have, um, I will never forget when I was on Dance with the Stars and gosh, that's a lot of stress. And I remember the doctor comes in, they assess everyone towards the end because, you know, your body's going through a lot. And he happened to be a believer, which was really cool. And I was like laying down on the bed and he was like, relax. And I was like, okay, I'm relaxed. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, like relax. (laughs) And I was like, I am relaxed. And he goes, you're back is not touching the bed and literally my butt wasn't even touching the bed like I was laying down I was so stiff that like I wasn't even laying on the bed and I thought I was and Mm -hmm. talk about the intensity that has to be in your body Mm -hmm. for you to think you're laying down your back's not even touching the bed yeah and he said we're gonna do something right now he said just like God breathe life into all of creation you are going to take intentional time to breathe Mm -hmm. life into every part of your body. And he said, I want you to think about your arms, breathe life into your arms. I want you to think about your legs, breathe life into your legs. Mm -hmm. And um, I did that. And you know, what's really cool is once I started speaking, I would feel that fear Mm -hmm. and I would feel that intensity. My shoulders start hurting. I have knots on my back. And before I would go on stage, I would breathe life into my hands, breathe life into my feet, breathe life into my legs and and just invite the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's your breath in my lungs, God. So Mm -hmm. when I breathe this life, I'm breathing life into each part of my body. And it's amazing how much lighter my body felt. And so that's a real thing. I remember you used to like start shaking your hands because you start feeling like, you know, when you're fearful, there are physical things that happen to your body. And I remember even like, Whenever I would give blood and you would oh, come into the blood geez. mobile, you know, the blood mobile comes in. to church or whatever. And <laughs> and I would give be in there giving blood and Sadie would come in and she'd be all of a sudden be like, I think I'm going to faint. And move. like my, my hands feel really heavy, you know. I can't even but look yeah, at the there are practical things that you can do. And I Which, think that that's a good thing to, for us to kind of transition to. Yes. Some of those practical things. It's and good. for me, when I was going through that time of worry and anxiety, mm-hmm. Um, I, I saw Dr. Amen, who's been on the podcast, so go listen to some of those podcasts. But, you know, he talked to me about meditation and taking some time to just be quiet. And at first it was like, there was this like, I think it was like a 16 minute. And I was like, 16 minutes to like <laughs> lay and just be still in my mind. That's going to be a stretch, you know? <laughs> and so then, but it's being purposeful about that mm-hmm. time. And meditation goes with prayer. It's not something that's different or like, oh, I can't do meditation because mm-hmm. that's, you know, not of God. This is prayer and meditation and time to just allow yourself. There's a um, a friend of mine, she kind of like starts her prayers with just a time to breathe and mm-hmm. says, you know, God, you you decided my first breath mm-hmm. and you know my last. Yep. And just that, like, just saying that, like, you 
ordered my first breath and you know my last. Mm. It's just like giving it up to God saying like, he is in charge of it all. He's in control of it all. And starting starting your day or your prayer with that, just just that understanding that like, Mm. okay, it's not on me. Like it's really not on me. It's on God. He is the God of the universe. He's God of everything. He's a good God and he loves me. And so I can just like, lay it in his hands. And there's mm-hmm. so many scriptures that actually say that. Cast your anxieties on yes. him. Give your give your worries and fears over to him because he is capable mm-hmm. and he is worthy of taking care of those things. I love those scriptures are not just, um, you know, scriptures to read. It's mm-hmm. scriptures to act, right? Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's actually give them, you know, yeah. take captive your thoughts. I, mm-hmm. I remember um, like we talked about the loop and mm-hmm. my loop would begin to start in like a physical manifestation where I would start like doing this with my hands because mm-hmm. I couldn't feel my hands. And that's actually why I got my fearless tattoo here because I used to always like start to grab my wrist to be the first thing I do. And I wanted to see that as I started this is like, no, I'm not going to do this. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I actually, started to take my thought captive um and so it didn't lead to me feeling i couldn't breathe i mean there were several times i went to the hospital or drove to the hospital because i thought my chest was tightening Mm -hmm. up to the point that i couldn't breathe but it was really just fear like sitting on my chest and um you know now it's not that i don't start sometimes to feel that anxiety rise it's that i stop it as it begins to rise instead of letting it overtake my body if i start to feel those feelings i'm like I'm not going to start this. Like, we're not doing Mm -hmm. this. What am I afraid of? Okay, identify the fear. Is, as Dr. Amos says, ask yourself, is it true? Maybe. Is it absolutely true? Is the second Mm -hmm. question. Okay, no. Uh, What would I, how would I feel if I stopped thinking this? So Mm -hmm. much better. Can I surrender this? Yes, God, I surrender this to you. Like, going through that, um, even there's practical things. Yeah, I was going to say, another one of his practical tips that I really like is just, like, putting your hands in warm water. And that really helps. Yeah. I've had... um, couple moments where I'll be a little bit anxious and even before I speak or something and Christian will go just Mm -hmm. go put your hands in warm water and because my hands will get so shaky Mm -hmm. and it just calms you down and when you have a physical reaction of fear it it, even if you you know nothing's really wrong Mm -hmm. it tells your brain something's really wrong you know like if my hands are shaking And I feel I can't breathe. Like my mind is going, something is wrong. I got to figure out what's Mm -hmm. wrong. But there's actually nothing wrong. Your body is just physically reacting to something that you deep down internally believe. But if you can get that belief out of the way and say, okay, this is not true. This is not real. This is not happening. Or this is happening, but God, you're in control. This is happening, but I can't do anything about it. So I surrender it to you, Lord. Everything just starts to shift. And so you know, taking your thoughts captive can sometimes be like an actual action of putting your hands in warm water, Mm -hmm. meditating for a minute, sitting down and telling yourself truth. One thing Dr. Amon told me is he asked me like about my anxiety attacks and what happens when I have them. And um, I told him about the plane situation. And he said, you should have never left. And he said, never leave the room. And I always left the room. I mean, I can't, that is not the only time I left the room. I mean, there are so many times where I would be in a room with people and I'd go to the bathroom because I'd start to feel anxious or have an anxiety attack or I would, you know, be at a movie and leave because mm-hmm. I just started feeling like something was going to happen or just started to feel like something's off. And it was because my anxiety would just take over, which I do want to talk about this in a second because we talked about – um like feeling like that's God that's warning yeah, us. Uh-huh. But I'll give you one more practical thing. So mm-hmm. Dr. Amen told me whenever I went to him to stop drinking caffeine, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no way. It felt to me like the 16-minute meditation. Yeah. Like, that's going to be a stretch, Dr. A. <laughs> and uh, I was just like, I can't always drink caffeine. Like, I drink coffee every day. Like, it was like so my thing. It was my social thing. It was, I love coffee. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you shouldn't stop drinking caffeine because what it's doing to you. He says, what, is, what do you feel like when you drink caffeine? Well, my heart, I have um, um, my Travel Prolats, which is me, my heart skips a beat every now and then. And caffeine makes that a little bit worse. It's not dangerous. It just feels weird and it yeah. makes me feel anxious. And yeah. then I start going, what's wrong with my heart? Something's wrong with my heart. Mm-hmm. Like, am I going to have a heart attack and just jump to the worst case scenario? And uh, one, caffeine would make my heart skip a beat. And two, it would make my hands shaky. Well, those are two things that mimic fear. And it's amazing that after I stopped drinking caffeine and put some of these practical things into my life, for a solid two years, I had about two anxiety attacks. One was in the middle of the night and one was postpartum. And um, so 
that was a significant yeah. difference just yeah. by eliminating that physical manifestation of fear mm-hmm. um, and taking my thoughts captive and whatnot. Now I can drink caffeine and I don't feel that way um, because I took time to train my body yeah. and train my mind that this is not true. But I mean, you got to be fed up with your fear. You know, you yeah. got to be spiritually annoyed. Like there's a, a scripture where Paul just gets spiritually annoyed and you just cast it out. Or maybe it's Peter. He's like, I'm just done with this person. Like I cast out that demon. Like you got to be like, I'm so annoyed by this. I'm not going to live in this. I'm not going to keep watching um, all the criminal shows just because I like them because they make me afraid. I'm not going to listen to the podcast on crime because it makes me afraid. I'm not going to go put myself in these situations or I'm not going to drink caffeine and cold brew all day long and not eat anything and make me anxious. Like you got to be at the point where like I'm willing to do the thing that might be hard because I would rather. Or that might be hard and also might be countercultural. Yes, might be different than everybody else around me is yes. doing because I know that this is not helpful for me in I my would life. Rather I would rather eliminate to that uh-huh. than live in fear. Yeah. It's good. But I love what you were going to say when we talked about earlier this idea of. You know, I always felt like it was God oh, warning yeah, yeah, yeah. me because uh-huh. I would be like, "Well, I had to leave because I feel like it's God telling me that something's dangerous. Right. I need to get out." Like, yeah, I thought I God remember, was telling me the plane was going to crash. Yeah, <laughs> I remember specifically that moment right there because um, when Sadie got off the plane and calls me from the bathroom and she was like, "I don't know. How do I know? What if it was God? Um, you know, telling me to get off that plane?" And I said, "You know, God tells us that He doesn't give us a spirit of fear." He, that, that is in his word. And so whenever there's something that, yes, I do believe that God can give you warnings or, or things like that can happen. And I remember there's other instances that you were in a scary situation that God gave you a warning, but you didn't feel this fear. And so I was like, take note of that. And like, if it is something that you just feel all of a sudden, like just fearful, that's not God. That is not God. That is, that is because whenever God gives you a warning about something, there's an angel that's protecting you. He will give you a spirit of confidence, a sound mind of like knowing mm-hmm. a peace. And you mentioned that we were in Mogadishu. And um, the night before we left for that trip, I remember I got a text about this scripture that just was like, whoa, it was almost felt like a little bit of a warning that like, okay, what are we about to go through? And I just remember saying like, God, I just want to, I want to cover us with your word and your scripture. And I got on my knees and I and I prepared. But it mm-hmm. wasn't a place of like fear of like, oh, no, I'm not going to do this. Or it wasn't like I'm not going to get on that plane tomorrow. It was like, God, whatever you have for us there, we're going to be okay. And I know mm-hmm. that. And yeah. so I think that like that's the difference. And mm-hmm. I do remember there was a moment um, that you, you were in Nashville, living in Nashville as a single you know, mm-hmm. young girl, there was a moment that was scary, but that God gave you a gave you a, a warning mm-hmm. and you just you turned around and you did not go into that space. And it was a very real situation that could have could yeah, have been really very bad. dangerous. But I, I remember when you called me about it. Yes, you were shook up because it was a scary situation, but you felt a piece of unknowing. And I think that's kind of like when you know that that's of God. But if you feel like just incapacitated fear that's not of God yeah well it's actually a cool story and mm-hmm. I guess we'll end on this because okay. I just want to share a little bit about the story because it's kind of like the power of the storm and the power of your God mm-hmm. moment so I was like in a mall in Nashville and walking around and I noticed that these guys had n- noticed me um, and were a little bit weird about it but I was mm-hmm. like okay keep walking whatever so I kept walking kept shopping and honestly like forgot about it wasn't yeah. really thinking about that moment anymore well then I went to leave and I didn't realize it was like closing time for the store. And so because it was that, I had to like walk down this, um, like the garage, what's the parking garage? garage. And I felt weird about like I had a sense in my spirit, like something wasn't right. And so I tried to call, I think I tried to call, um, you mm-hmm. maybe I tried to even call dad. I think mm-hmm. I called dad. Like yeah. I like knew something yeah. was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't like call my dad all the time. I'm like I, I called dad. <laughs> Some people are like, oh yeah, you called your dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I would call dad. And it's like emergency <laughs> or like what's for dinner. <laughs> so I called dad and I was like, hey, I'm walking down parking garage. Just wanted to get on the phone with somebody and. Um, Anyways, I got to walk around the corner to where my car was, and it was literally just my car there with um, a white van with the three men in the van that had been 
watching me in the store who were not previously part beside me. And I started walking. And when I saw them, I like made eye contact and kind of like went like this. And I'm not kidding. They literally like jumped back. And I remember there was like something in my spirit Mm -hmm. that almost went like, why'd you jump? Like, yeah, why? Yeah. Like, (laughs) yeah, I should be scared, Mm -hmm. but it looks like you're scared. Yeah. And I ran back inside and there was a policeman right inside and I told him the situation. And as soon as we walked back out, the van had gone. And um, Mm -hmm. so obviously that was a really bad situation that Mm could have been horrible. And I was shaken up. I was shaken by the thought of what it could have been. But I remember thinking like, God was with me. Like they saw, I think they saw God. I think Mm -hmm. they saw either angel angel or or something something Uh that made them go, whoa, like that is, Mm -hmm. that, that scared them. Yeah. And I do think that that's what it looks like to like walk with God in closest when he says Mm -hmm. like, I am with you. Like he really is with you. He's got your back and uh, you might be in a scary situation, but the fear of the Lord is so much scarier Mm -hmm. to the enemy. And um, it was just a really crazy um, learning moment for me, but also a a learning moment for me to discern whenever I feel like it's God leading me to something Mm -hmm. or it's fear. Because like mom said, I didn't feel like crazy anxiety before walking into that moment. I felt um, a prompting. Mm -hmm. I felt aware and a prompting to call my dad, Mm -hmm. an awareness to like be alert, to make Mm -hmm. eye contact, to look to see where my car was for walking Mm -hmm. to it. And all these different things. And then as opposed to in the times that I've been just anxious out of my mind, Mm -hmm. it's like all of a sudden I'm like, I start with anxiety. I start with fear. I start in this. And then I'm like, maybe it's God. It must be God, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not God. And there have been other times in my life where I felt a prompting or an awareness. And most of the time, God has led me into peace from that moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't know why, you know, and sometimes I see it very clearly. There is a bad situation. And so discernment is a really important thing to grow in and to pray for. Um, But it is not God if it comes through fear. And I think that Mm -hmm. um, Joseph is a great example of this. Joseph and Mary just had Jesus and God gives them a dream that they need to leave, you know, where they, where Jesus had just been born because they were about to come in and kill all the baby boys. Well, it, it wasn't like he was afraid. It was like, the Lord said, this is the plan. And there was a prompting and he woke up and he went and he did it. Mm -hmm. And so God does prompt and to discern those moments are very important, but Mm -hmm. also not to feel like God speaks through fear and confusion because he doesn't. Yeah, I think that's good. I was also thinking about the fact that um, just the trust in the will of God, you know, Jesus, even before, before Jesus' death, he comes to God like, if there's any other way, take this from me but your will be done. And that's something I think if we can live our lives in that, like knowing that like, like God, like I'm asking for you to keep me safe. I'm asking for these bad things to not happen in my life, but your will be done because I I know that you are better and I trust that your ways are better than mine, that you know and you see more than I see. And so just living in that like trust of God's will Mm-hmm. I think can also help you to kind of overcome from those fears mm-hmm. because, um, you know, he is a good father. Mm-hmm. I, I'd love to end on some scriptures. Do it. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So Philippians, Philippians, let's see, four, um, six. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I just... Thinking about that, that's the first thing is like, don't be anxious about anything. Okay, if you stop there, you're like, okay, but how do I do that? Okay, he goes on to tell you like, God, prayer and petition with thanksgiving and so gratefulness. That's another thing that gratitude helps you overcome anxiety and fear and worry whenever you start pointing out the positives, pointing out the good things that God has in your life. Um, Just to back up to what you mm -hmm. said earlier, that it always aligns, like whether Mm -hmm. it's like you hear it from someone in the world and it's biblical, like Brene Brown, she's genius and she wrote this entire books about shame and she's amazing. But one of the things she says that is so like revolutionary is that gratitude defeats fear. And she talks and it's true. Like, Uh I mean, if you have this fear that, oh, something's gonna happen to my baby. And then you say, I'm so thankful for my baby. All of a sudden, like you're not afraid something's gonna happen to your baby. But even though Brene Brown is a genius and that was great, it's right here. It's right here. (laughs) Which I love that you said that because that goes on. Okay. That was, that was like six and seven. And then the next scripture is 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. So that's exactly that. That's that, you know, that what science can tell us, but the scripture has already told us is that like when we, we focus our mind on things that are lovely and that are pure or they're excellent True. or praiseworthy, when we focus our mind on thankfulness and gratitude and we go to God with prayer and we cast our worries on Him, like, what do we have to be afraid of? It's so, so. true. And I mean, that's literally kind of Dr. Amon saying, too. Mm-hmm. Is it true? Mm-hmm. Is it make me feel better? Is it all these right. things? You're kind of going through this list, you know? Mm-hmm. And we have learned from people like Dr. Amon. We have learned from people like Brene Brown. We have learned from our counselors. Mm-hmm. But the things that have been so pivotal in our life are the things mm-hmm. that are rooted in Scripture, the things that are rooted in the thing that the God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And so um, I'm really excited for y'all to— um, take just some of the practical things that we talked about in the scripture and even just the desire to know God more after Mm -hmm. this, because truly this past hour of conversation has changed my life. Like this, I would not be here today had I not taken on some of these practical things, taken on the scripture, learned about who my God is, understood um, who I am as a child of his. I mean, um, if if I hadn't gotten that, I would definitely not be doing what I'm doing today. I would yeah. definitely not have this podcast. I mean, this changed yeah. everything for me. Yeah. And so I just know that there are so many of you out there who have been struggling with fear and anxiety, but it does not have to define your life. It does not have to define your future. Mm -hmm. There is a way out and there is peace um, that's available to your mind. As wild as that sounds right now, (laughs) because I remember hearing that kind of stuff too, um, it is available. And this goes beyond us just saying to you, the Bible says, do not fear. Mm -hmm. We wanted to break down why it says that, why you don't have to be afraid. So we love you guys. I hope that this just starts a massive shift in your life. Uh, I did write a book called Live Fearless years ago when I was more in the thick of the journey of fear and it was kind of the start of me walking out of it. So if you need more resources, um, I hope that can encourage you as well. But we love you guys and I hope your summer is growing fantastic. I'm going to leave you with one more scripture. Yes. Okay, one more scripture because this is like a mantra that you can just quote. And I love this because it's so simple. It's Psalms 56.3 and it just says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Like, that's like the simplest scripture that you can memorize. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. And you can just say that over yourself every day, every hour as you need it. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Psalms 56.3. When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. I love that so much. Go write that on your hand or something and get to know it. (laughs) Get familiar with it. Say it every night and uh, start prepping your mind now to be a mind of peace.